Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are tuned in to the Vitamin D with Dawn Day podcast. And I am your host, Dawn Day, here to get you excited about your life so that you can live life on purpose and for a purpose. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Vitamin D, it's a pun of my name. Uh, my name is Dawn and you get vitamin D from the sun. So I'm here to shed light into your life. And I do this with inspirational insights and conversations with celebrities and everyday people like you and me. Because if you want to be better and you want to do better, then you're going to have to be able to see better. So join me on this journey of living our best lives and understanding and realizing how you are your greatest asset. I think today is a great day to take a chance on yourself. They say dreams don't work unless you do. I don't know about you, but I tell you, I'm living my life on purpose and for a purpose. You know, um, I work out, or I used to work out at this park, Pan Pacific Park. It's in uh, mid cities right here in Los Angeles. Right over there by the Grove. And I'm thinking about this young brother, always trying to flirt. I may have mentioned it to you or mentioned him to you before. But even in his way of all the flattery, uh, one thing that I walked away with that I thought was so powerful, he asked me, he said, when was the last time that you've done something for the first time? I'm asking you that. When was the last time that you've done something for the first time? If you can't think of anything, please make it a mission at the next opportune time to do something. Do something that you've never done before because, um, you know, this life is short. Like, we gonna die. And I guess I've just been thinking of myself. I've been telling you how just growing, uh, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and how I'm just opening up these, uh, I wanted to say caves, walls, doors, windows. I don't know what you call it, but I'm opening up. And it's a beautiful thing. It's scary and it's nerve wracking, um, but I like it. And in opening up, you know, I've realized I've opened up the realm of possibility for things. And I think that's the beautiful thing about life. It's all about the possibility. In fact, in this level of vulnerability, I think I may have met someone. So I'm excited about it. I'm not giving too many details yet because let's see how it goes. But um, it's exciting and it's exciting to be excited. And I guess I want that for you because that's what we talk about on the podcast. We talk about living your life on purpose and for a purpose. And I tell you each and every time that it's time to get excited about your life. Because we got to live while we still can, right? And I feel like when we talk about dreams, when we talk about uh, being vulnerable, open or taking a chance, half of the time, I feel like we're not moving because we're afraid. We're feeling like it has to be perfect or it has to be just right. It has to be the perfect timing. But I, essentially, it's just when you're ready, when you're ready to receive. And when you're ready to dish out what you have, oftentimes, I think we're trying to dish out things that we have no source to. But getting to the source of you and understanding who you are and honoring yourself, you live abundantly. In fact, I posted this on my IG story. I came across this quote and I want to share this with you. It says, you, you listen, look at you blooming into your most attractive, most authentic and most divine self. You deserve it. Yo, you deserve to live your best life unapologetically and you deserve to live it on purpose and for a purpose and that's going to require you to get outside of your comfort zones you know I talk about it all the time because I'm training with Latif with OM training and his whole motto is no comfort zones in fact he has a whole line it says magical things happen outside of your comfort zone so this whole idea of trying to be perfect get away from it in fact my next guest I have coming up um, she is the CEO and founder of Milk Jar Cookies one of my favorite cookie spots her name it's Courtney Cowan, okay? And um, she's in the business of making people smile through her cookies, spreading joy. And she's also a recovering perfectionist. And we talk about her journey as far as opening up her business, her finding out who she is and why she is uh, so adamant about progression over perfection. I'm telling you, there's a lot to be learned here. And I mean, like I told you, Bad times don't last always, but strong people do. And since life is short, why not eat a cookie? So let's dive in and let's talk to Courtney about milk jar cookies located off of Wilshire, my favorite place. Yum. Get your vitamin D right here with me and get excited about your life. Oh my gosh, guys, <laughs> guys, listen, listen to me. I am so excited right now. 
I have Courtney Cowan in the studio with me. Um, she's the founder. Can I say CEO or creator or? Uh, I am all of those things. <laughs> she's everything when it comes down to milk yeah. jar cookies. Okay. And, um, you know, Courtney, welcome to my dreams. I am so happy to be here. And I'm grateful to have tasted yours and to have experienced, to have it be a journey. And um, I'm excited to share people about it because I think, you know, here on the Vitamin D podcast, it's all about shedding light. Mm -hmm. Um, Shedding light, whether it comes to health, uh, financial situations, relationships, uh, whatever it is, we just want to shed light on what it is, Mm -hmm. what it isn't, even maybe what it could be. Mm -hmm. And today, baby. We're talking about cookies. <laughs> Just a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you more, more, more. But um, Courtney Cowan, um, she's the founder of Milk Jar Cookies. It's located right off the Wilshire Boulevard, um, 10 minutes away from my house. Yes. Um, and, you know, I always talk about living your life on purpose and for purpose. Mm-hmm. And when you can get to the point, like I'm screaming when you're coming in because you decided to be bold enough to step into your dreams. I, I just was going to say, I have a feeling I'm going to cry today. <laughs> Joy! <laughs> You're going to make me cry. <laughs> but, uh, you say cry, and it's just like, it's so interesting because even with tears, like it's water and that's life. Yeah. And you know, anytime you have a sense of some type of water, like something is growing. So mm-hmm. I welcome that. And um, not only is she the uh, founder of Milk Jar Cookies, but... Uh, Courtney is a dreamer, clearly, because that's why we're here right now. We're talking about manifestations. We're talking about walking in it. And also, you're a former gymnast, and you say <laughs> recovering perfectionist? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we're going to delve into all of that. Um, but I just had to get excited to tell you why. I'm so excited she's in here. Because uh, this, this company, Milk Jar Cookies, was kind of like my introduction to L.A., Oh, what I mean by that, um, I love a cookie, Courtney. Mm-hmm. I moved out here in September 2013. Oh. We just opened a- the previous April. Shut the front. Courtney, yeah. you know my birthday is in April. Do you April 19th? I'm in Aries. Do you see the, you see this? We opened here? April 16th. Shut the front door. 2013. We sure did. <laughs> so, um. Going down to uh, Milk Jar Cookies was kind of like an introduction into LA for me. It was one of the staples. That was my moment. I would go right next door to Wind Nail so Spa. Mm-hmm. And then I'm walking right down to get my chocolate chip walnut. And you know, I, I, <laughs> hey, so you box, extra. <laughs> there's a, a box here and it has some weight. There's a box of cookies. Um, we're going to open it. We're going to talk about it. But I guess first, Courtney, folks need to know who you are. Um, your energy. I feel it. I heard you in the, in the studio right next to us and it felt so good. And it's just like to have these sweets in front of us, I can only imagine there's a sweet story that you have to tell. So um, who are you? Who is Courtney? Who is Courtney? Um, That's a how, loaded question. Huh? Uh, how far back you want to go? <laughs> March 17th, 1978. <laughs> um, I was born in Fort Worth, Texas. Um to uh, two wonderful parents. I am one of three children in the middle, the middle kid. Mm. Um, I was a gymnast, as we discussed, um, from the eight, my parents owned a gymnastics club in Texas. So from the time I could walk, even before I could walk, I was at the gym. Um, so from the time I could walk, I was learning gymnastics. I competed in my first meet when I was four years old. Wow. Um, yeah. Wait, uh, not like, oh, I'm taking class. You're competing at four? I was competing at four. <laughs> the discipline. Um, yes. Uh, hence my recovering perfectionism. Yes. Because, um, you know, it's not enough to just practice makes perfect. It was perfect practice. But Every perfect, time because you had you know? to hit the number. You had yeah. to hit the landing. Yeah. So every day in life, I am shooting for the perfect 10, um, which mm-hmm. does not always happen, as we know. Mm-hmm. So, um, So learning that phrase good enough has been a, uh, a, a dream, um, of mine. But anyway, we, um, anytime I wasn't at the gym, I, you would find me making cookies. Like my mom taught me the basics of baking and I would make the recipe off the back of the bag when I was, you know, seven, eight years old and just really loved eating cookie dough. Quite frankly, (laughs) we didn't always bake them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just loved that. And one night when in 1989, when I was 11 years old, we did not have any baking soda. 
And I was like, it's only a teaspoon. It's not going to matter that much. So I just kept going. Well, that night I did bake them. And of course they were a puddly mess. And so that was when I learned, I asked my mom about it. And that was when I learned that there was a science to baking. Well, that fascinated me. So I then kind of started tinkering. And, you know, if we were out of something, I would think of something else. And um, when I was about 13 or so, I became, I came up with my own chocolate chip cookie recipe. Wait, what? And um, <laughs> that continued to get tweaked a little um, throughout the years. But when I moved to Los Angeles and started working in TV, I would bring them in and they would just be in the kitchen and I would hear people going, hey, what bakery are those cookies from? They're so good. Or So I started thinking maybe there was something to it. And so, um, you know, single girl in my 20s at night, I had nothing better to do than like play around with cookie dough and come up with different uh, flavors. And so in 2005, I actually started a cookie company out of my coat closet of my one bedroom apartment. You st- oh, okay. <laughs> let's let's get a pause here. First, just starting off, one of the things that I think is so interesting. Um <clears throat> I believe in God, Courtney, but I'm not religious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess I'm saying this because it was so interesting you saying like how you found your way with cookies mm-hmm. started as a child and how, you know, as a child, we're just so free. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so many people like Dawn, well, how do I find my purpose or Dawn, how do I find what it is that I want to do? And I just simply say, what is it that you love? And just like you said, no matter what, you always found yourself back to the dough. Mm-hmm. That substance of the dough when kneading it and how that that is the process of it. And I'm just curious, even for yourself, um, did, did you have any encouragement to tell you to keep going with the dough? You just. As I experienced, like people, really, my family and, you know, friends loved them, but I don't know that they necessarily ever thought I would start a company. Well, even here's it. the thing. So here's yeah. interesting. Um, and I think that's the reason why a lot of people may step back from things. Mm-hmm. What made you just stay with it? Because it was fun. Why did you stay with cookies? Because I loved making people smile. I loved the joy that someone would get from eating when the the eyes light up and they're like, oh, like that. Oh, whole, yes, that, you feel it, the texture. Yeah. Mm, the cream is, mm. Exactly. So that whole, like that moment of watching people that I knew or I didn't know was such, um, that brought me so much joy that I wanted to keep, I wanted to do that and I wanted to do it even on a larger scale than just bringing them to parties or to work. So Mm. that's, um, yeah, in 2005, I was like, oh, I'm going to start this cookie company. Um, So I got a fax machine uh, and that's how I got orders. What? Um, Yeah. And uh, it wasn't a lot, but I, you know, word would spread and my contacts in TV. And so I, and I, and I loved my job. And I think that's what, so I did it on the side for seven years. So TV on the side, uh, cookies on the side. Oh, okay. So my full time job was television. What were so you doing? I was a post production producer. Okay. So, was, so for anyone that doesn't know, what does that entail? That is helping oversee, like keeping um, the whole post production process on schedule and on budget. So kind of it was more managerial. So managing the editors and then the color correction, visual effects, sound design, all that kind of stuff. Mm, uh, detail. Just keeping that. Yeah, exactly. So it's all um, kind of worked into that. It's all worked into that. So you're at the, the office, mm-hmm. people in the kitchen. Ooh, these cookies are so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a bag. What in the... Mm-hmm. And so what are you doing in this moment? You got people affirming something that you just found some joy in. Yeah. What's happening in your mind right now? Hmm, maybe there's something to this. And so I kind of, yeah, I just started, you know, I didn't think I could open a company with just a chocolate chip cookie recipe. So I started playing around with different flavors and um, ended up coming up with um, about 16 different flavors um, in my home kitchen. And that's when I started that first company was called Sweet Cheeks Cookies. Sweet Cheeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why auto call- sweets in the cheeks. And I called my sister Sweet Cheeks. That's my like Aww. pet name for her. So, um, so yeah. So Sweet Cheeks Cookies, and that was just out of my one bedroom apartment. But then the nature of television is you have you know hiatuses or your show gets canceled. So I would find myself with pockets of time where I was like, okay, I'm going to do this full time. It's cookie time. But then I would get a job offer or my show would come back. I'm like, oh, I need the money. So I would go back. So I kind of kept doing it. You know, it was very much on the side, but then I would sometimes 
come home at 10 o'clock at night and have 12 dozen cookies to bake and... Oh, because somebody because placed the order. Somebody placed an order. So then I would like bake until late. I would take a nap while they cooled, get up and package them, take another nap, and then like drive them wherever they had to go bef- on my way to work the next morning. So that just affirmed that I really, I mean, in that experience, dropping them off and like, especially if it was a surprise for someone and they open their front door and they're like, oh, like that joy, it was just like a whole other element of it. And I was like, you know what? I just, I just love this. Um, and to have the the drive to do both when it was, you know, not always that easy showed me how much I did love it. Um, and I knew it was worth it. And um, I remember one particularly challenging show in 2011. I was working just an immense amount of hours and I was didn't feel like I was doing the cookies proud. Like I felt like mm. I was not able to you know, give them. So I just told my husband, I was like, all right, I think I just need to, I need to put it away for a while. The cookies away. The cookies away. I need to just, because I, I did, I never wanted to do a bad job at the job I was being paid for. It's how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. And so I just said, I think I need to put it away for a little while because I need to focus on this job. Uh, So I packed all the packaging materials up, everything, and I put it all in the garage and it wasn't two days later that I was like, oh, I've made a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake. I, to, <laughs> I got to do the cookies. Um, so it was about a year later that I decided to go full time with it. Um, I had back surgery in the summer of 2012. Hold which, on, hold on. Courtney, <laughs> hold, hold on. Let me back up a little bit. Because I think um, what I want people to really get from you mm-hmm. is that whether their their dream is starting in the kitchen, it can be starting in the political realm, it could be starting, I don't know, in the writer's room mm-hmm. of just understanding this process of what that calling or what that thing that attracts someone because I think that's the path. Mm-hmm. And just like you said, everything can be an extension. It doesn't mean that's the only thing, but the thing that I think is key is that you said while making these cookies, discovering around these cookies, you found something that the joy is. Mm-hmm. And um, I think with anything in life, it's all about giving from the overflow. See, it's only when you, you're thinking you got to compromise or you have to share, you think you're taking away, but mm-hmm. you were just operating in a space of abundance. Like, oh my gosh, you need this. Oh my God, the joy. And it's just like me, oh my. Mm-hmm. I think if so many people operate in that sense of what can I offer up and give? Mm-hmm. And, and, and the thing that's so key is that sometimes people are like, oh, you know, you keep doing for others and you forget about yourself. But that's not exactly what happened here. You were actually thinking of yourself. And I think that's how you work in your purpose and your gift. And then it just happens that it overflows and then it shares just like light. It shares to everyone else. Mm-hmm. I love that. I mean, I love you. I mean, because I mean, that's why you're here. Yeah. Like the joy of that and, and the patience that you took with that. And I'm just curious. Even though it is joy, do you know why? Why it makes you happy? I know you said smi- smiling, but mm-hmm. is there anything else? Why was is it the moment that you feel like maybe because you can get, you know, put this recipe together, maybe because it's something you created or? Mm-hmm. I think it definitely has to do with the creative. Like I, I'm a very creative person. And so I think having this thing, and I think like I, I say baking is magic and it, it can be, um, like I talk about it in my cookbook, the act of baking can make you really happy. It can like really? heal a broken heart. It can, you know, it, just having something to put your hands to and really um, have to concentrate on because baking is very specific. And so I find like that can bring a lot of joy. Someone eating it, yourself or providing it to someone else also for that person creates joy but then for you to create it and share it with someone share that is happiness and joy for both parties so that's why I just think it um baking is so special and so um so that I think is what it is for me it's like the fact that and now of course we're doing it on such a large right. scale mm-hmm. but when you get a box of milk jar cookies. Listen, when you get a box of milk jar cookies, <laughs> let me tell you the love that's put into the box mm-hmm. along with the packaging and everything is uh, perfectly packaged and then they place a bow on top. It's a complete experience. Sorry, Courtney. I don't jump in. I, I, <laughs> no, are you kidding? That was, that is, makes me so happy. You're, you got the message. Like I got that, the memo. And that is, that is what we're doing. So it's like, you know, I always tell the staff like, 
when people come into the shop, we get a chance to say, hey there, how you doing? Mm-hmm. And, you know, we get to engage with them and provide them, um, you know, an added level of, of joy if they're having a bad day. Hopefully they will leave our shop better than they came in. That's one of our core values is like, leave it better than you found it. And it's people, places, and things. So when people aren't in our shop and they get a box of cookies delivered to them, like that's our, hey there, how you doing? And hey. they, this is their way of knowing that like someone took great care to put this together for you. And someone in your life obviously ordered them for you, but we didn't just slop it together and drop it on your doorstep. Like that's you can tell yeah. that someone took time and and put effort into it. So that's, you got that message. I that got, is, listen, that it makes me so happy. Repeatedly <laughs> going back. Um, but you mentioned, you said at first it was called Sweet Cheeks. How did you get to Milk Jar? So I couldn't get the trademark. Um, Ooh, okay. When I started Sweet Cheeks, I didn't know anything about trademarking. Um, but I did a Google search and there was a diaper company in, I think, Nebraska or something called Sweet Cheeks. <laughs> that was a, what? That was it. Don't want to um, do that. Don't want that. So I was like, okay, cool. I can do this. So I just did Sweet Cheeks cookies. Um but then when I decided to go, you know, full out with it and I knew I wanted to open a store. Full out. Hold on, Courtney. Did you hear what you just said? Catch uh, it. You said full out. I did. A lot of people don't live full out. They live a step out, a peek out, a tip out, mm-hmm. but not full out. And I just wanted to make note of that because if someone is listening to you mm-hmm. and feels inspired to say, hey, I have a dream, whatever it is. You're going to have to live full out. You have to. And you're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Don't be sorry. It's a wonderful message. And it's so true. Um, and yeah, full out. Got to do it. So I decided um, I was going to go full out with it. And um, so I looked and at that point, someone else had trademarked Sweet Cheeks. So I started just making a list of words, phrases, anything I could think of that had to do with baking or the aesthetic that I knew I wanted for the shop or any of that. And I just kept coming back to the milk jar cookies. It just, those three words seem to encapsulate. The now like experience. milk in your last name, nothing like, cause at first I was going to pronounce your name Cohen, but it's Cowan. Oh, it is Cowan. So nothing, yes. that was not an inspiration. It was not. Okay. No, okay, just no, that's so funny. Cause, um, Somebody just asked me that not too long ago, and I had never even thought about it. <laughs> but now it's like, Look obviously, people it. think about that. Yeah. Um, no, it was just like, you know, you can't have cookies without milk. Right? So I was like, I knew I wanted milk, and I knew the aesthetic I wanted was that, you know, very homey, warm environment yes. that welcomes people in. And um, I wanted to serve the cookies on vintage china and the milk in little milk jars and things like mm-hmm. that. So I was like, well, milk jar cookies. So that was kind of how I came up with that. And it it encompasses everything that you're saying, kind of like that home feel. Mm -hmm. And even just in the term of a jar, like rather than a cup or a glass, it's a jar. Mm -hmm. It's it's just so comforting. Um, Thank you. And the first thing I did was get the trademark. Hello, somebody. (laughs) Yeah. Before anything, you wanted to make sure it was locked Mm -hmm. and sealed. Yeah. So before I did any branding or anything like that, I wanted to make sure that I could get that trademark. So I did. And then we carried on with so you mentioned, you said something about um, <clears throat> people giving affirmations about your cooking and how mm-hmm. great it is. And, um, you know, I often like to say that we should affirm ourselves and get confirmed by other people. We shouldn't wait for other people to, you know, tell us who we are, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're humans, right? Yeah. But I think one thing that has stood out to me that's so interesting is that um, in the affirmation process, like people can say they see this potential. All day. They can say, ha, oh my gosh, you can go to the Olympics. Let's say if you were still in the whole gymnastic realm. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a speaker. His name is Eric Thomas. And he says something. He says, you have to want your dreams as bad as you want to breathe. Mm. And it makes me think, you you talked about this whole balance that you had to do when you were in, in TV, as well as going after this. And then even when you... Tra- well, even- even when you tried to say, listen, get out my face, let me pack you up and go. You found yourself with what, 48 hours or less back <laughs> trying to get it. Yeah. So my question is to you is, um, what was that process like of making a decision to say, hey, while I'm on hiatus, let me go back. Because sometimes we pass things and, and, and we want to leave it there. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you got to pause to pivot. Sometimes you got to step back to mm-hmm. propel forward. Tell me about it. It just, it was always itching in the back of my head. So it was like, there was, rarely a show between 2005 and 2012 
where I was not doing both. Like doing, sometimes the cookies would be very, you know, I a, a dozen and it'd be because my dad ordered it. You know, it's like, it was not a lot of business from time to time, but there was just this thing in the back of my head that the what if, you know, and the like, could it, could it be something? And will I be fully satisfied if I don't try? Oh, catch it. Say it again. (laughs) Say that. Say that. Will I be fully satisfied if I don't at least try? Listen to me. What, what do you want? No, I'm talking to you. Yes. You listening right now. What do you want from your life? And I'm saying this because I'm talking to somebody that built their dream. I'm talking to somebody that sat here and decided to be intentional about what you want in your life. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people miss. You have to be intent. You cannot walk around here. Just think you're floating and say it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You can create the life that you want. Heck, you're creating your dreams literally with your hands. Yeah. And as I have been working with my intentional with my fitness journey, even intentional with my podcast, I can attest to the fact what it means to actually have an idea and to work towards it. Mm-hmm. When you say you had to be intentional mm-hmm. or what does that really mean? It, to me, that meant focusing 100% of my energy and my thoughts and my time on this cookie mm. quest. So I could not do the cookie quest cookie quest. something's on that <laughs> that something's on that i don't know yeah. if it's a book a oh, children's really? book oh you're saying that i could create absolutely cookie quest. Cookie cookie catch quest. that yeah or a game or a little game yeah <laughs> yeah oh I my gosh that. that's a- i love that okay i'm sorry go ahead okay. no it's okay <laughs> um i i didn't want to i never wanted to resent my job because i really loved my job um but i also didn't want to resent the cookies and so that's why i decided you. to like yeah. And, and so much of my identity throughout, I mean, when I started dating my husband now, he, you know, I was, I'd, maybe it was like 2006. So I had been doing this thing on the side for six, nine months. And, but then all of his friends said, oh, the cookie girl, oh, the cookie lady. And it was like, bring my, all the sweet treats. Yeah. And it's like from now, you know, until today, even 15 years later, People still are like, oh, the cookie girl. Oh, you're the cookie lady. Oh, and so much of my identity has become um, cookies. But that was what my intentional and what I had to do to know if I was ever going to be, um, you know, if I didn't try. And to me, try meant open a storefront. It didn't mean doing it um, half-assed on the side. Because- but hold up. You said something about the fact that the hiatus, what did the hiatus have to do with you? And the cookies. It just provided me a time to 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 do that, to have that focus. Courtney, everybody can't just take off that much time off of work. No, not at all. And so that's why, like, I'm glad I did the seven years on the side, but I knew that in order for me to be, to check it off my list and like get it out of my head, I either, I needed to choose for it to be a hobby slash side hustle whenever I could, or... I needed to go full out. How, how were you it. able to do that? How were you able to go full out? In the summer of 2012, I found myself at a crossroads because I had to have back surgery. So I was laid up and I knew that I was going to be laid up for six to eight weeks recovering. So I was like, oh, perfect time. I'll write a business plan. <laughs> so laying on the couch, uh, I started my business plan. And once I started writing that, I was so full of excitement and hope and confidence. It was like Mm. once I made that decision, like people asked me, make the freaking decision. Yeah. Make a choice. Yeah. I was so full. I was actually full of peace as opposed to being. What what uh, is the inspirational book coming out? (laughs) (laughs) Why is supposed to be scared? Talk to me. Yeah. So people were like, oh, aren't you afraid? And I've actually had people, friends later say, I'm glad this worked out because I was really worried about you opening a shop that was only cookies, you know, and I never had that fear. I didn't know if it was going to be what it has become. But on days when I allowed myself to dream real big, I knew that we had the potential. (sighs) But I just knew that I was so excited and I felt like, okay, 
I can do this. Joy, Mm -hmm. excitement, intention, sharing. It's pretty Um, good core for a business, right? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can stand here. That's how (laughs) I can say that I met you seven years before I met your face because I met your dream. Mm -hmm. And because you decided to be intentional and I... Oh, clearly, I'm dramatic, but it just makes me stand out because I don't think people really grasp that and how you do have to make a decision mm-hmm. about your life. Mm-hmm. And when you can be so bold and just making a decision in that whole aspect of helping and giving to other people, you realize because I decided to show up for me. Mm-hmm. Now I can also give people permission to do the same. And if we all can just show up for ourselves, Corny, come on. Can you imagine? Be a pretty great world, wouldn't it? A freaking amazing (laughs) world. And the fact that you can sit here, some people say, oh man, you know, I was late or my car broke down. I couldn't get to the job or I couldn't accept this position. I was feeling sick this day or I just fell upon hard times. You literally were on your back. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, Les Brown, he has a quote. He says, if you can look up, you can get up. And the fact that you were on a place where you were laid down on your back and you still were able to create an opportunity Mm -hmm. because it's like you kept your eyes on the prize. Like you kept your eye on the vision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, what afforded you the opportunity to still be able to, I guess, did you save money to be able to go throughout this hiatus? Did you get some support from other realms or... Um, I've always been pretty good with money. Like Mm -hmm. I, you know, didn't have a lot of savings, but it was kind of, it became an, an, um, a necessary thing to do when you, um, work in television, you realize very quickly, like, oh, I might not have a job for (laughs) a while. So you, you have to, you know, I mean, there've been times I put $5 of gas in my car because that's literally all I had. So, you know, but, um, but it, yeah, I just had been, and I had the the benefit of having a partner at the time. We um, had been married about a year um, and he worked full time. So I was able to, to do that. Um, and, uh, but yeah, we had savings. And then uh, as far as money to open the business, I was able to get a loan from, um, I took a small loan from my parents and then one from a bank. Awesome. Um, and, and then you know, put in so- what I had. It's so interesting because Jeremiah, you know, we're covering, you know, preparing for the interview. And he had made a comment. He was like, oh, well, she had, you know, support from her husband or and, you know, other people going after their dream. They're like, oh, I don't have that support system. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I had to say, wait a minute, brother. And not in a bad way, Mm -hmm. um, because we we hear about all the time that comparison is a thief to joy. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about growth, I can't measure Dawn's growth based on what Courtney grew, Mm -hmm. because where my level of comfort And where I'm stepping out of, that's my story. Mm -hmm. And if anything that we can do a parallel, so whether it be in a situation of maybe you are in a financial place where you can focus on this and versus someone else, you have to still step out of your norm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty and that's the gift. And that's what people need to understand because that's when all the magic stuff happened. When you have to to, to get uneasy. Yeah. I mean, in in the first year of the business, um, Adam, my husband, he... Took shout time. out to Adam. Shout Thank out you, to Adam. Adam. <laughs> um, he deserves lots of shout outs. Um, he actually took a year off. He's an editor in television, um, very talented one. And he took a year off to help me um, open the business. And oh so he gosh. was working seven days a week in it with me, um, serving customers. And he was great at it. And, um, but, you know, that was not his dream. So he, but he helped me get it off the ground and, um, and all of that. And then, but, you know, as far as the financial, you know, to answer your question, we, we went into a lot of personal, you know, we weren't being paid um, that first year. We didn't have, you know, the business couldn't afford that. And so, you know, we did go into, we had our savings, but then we went into, you know, some credit card debt and things like that. So it's like we, but that was a choice that we made that like, choice. we're going to, that's what we're going to have to do. And we just had to believe that it was going to be worth it someday. Because <laughs> you know? what uh, we're not doing is half-assing. No. So you said all the way. You had to. It's, mm-hmm. And I say I'm not religious, but I understand the principality of like how you have to write the vision and made it plain. Mm-hmm. You wrote the vision on your back. Mm-hmm. And then the vision superseded whatever anyone else had to say. Oh, it's just a cookie shot. Yeah. Oh, she just, that's all she got in a style. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, but look I at get a now. lot of, oh, that's so cute. You bake cookies. Which is Ooh. really insulting. <laughs> right. Shady. Shady yeah. boo. Yeah. 
Um, oh, it's actually a pretty successful company. But. Uh, majorly uh, <laughs> national uh, in Mid-City, Los Angeles, California. Catch it. <laughs> but the thing that's so interesting, it's like in life. Okay, let's just say, for example, we know what we're going after, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so many people are like, oh my gosh, Courtney, your cookies are well. But I still feel like there's some sort of inner work we all have to do because there comes a time, it's going to be self-doubt. Like, oh my gosh, this didn't come up. Like, what, what, what's that process like? What, 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 you know, what's going on in your head? What kind of inner work basically did you have to do? Because you're having everyone say that you could do it. Mm-hmm. Did you experience doubt? What's interesting is I experienced more doubt like five years in. Wait, than what? Than I did at the beginning. I think... I have a very um, good way. I, I put blinders on and I, it's like nose down and just go. That's that's my, like, that's how I operate. It's like if you just nose to the grindstone, blinders on and move forward. Yeah. And it took for probably a good, you know, three, four years. That's kind of how it was. It was, you know, um, there was just a law. It, it was, I mean, the amount of hours, I can't even tell you how many, you know, but then year five, year six, you think it's going to be easier. And those were, you know, we started having some growing pains and we had, you know, people moved away or people, you know, that had worked there for years and were such an integral part of the business um, left. And it, and that makes you like, I started feeling more doubt than I had before. And I think it's because I, there's something about blissful ignorance, you know, where you're just like, I'm just going to do it and I'm just going to follow my gut. And then when you start figuring out, you know, I didn't start this business with an exit plan. People asked me what, and I was like, I don't even know what that is. I, um, I guess, I'll, I guess I die. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, I have no idea. I just, I'm here to bake cookies. And this is my, this is me now. Um, but then it was like, as it started showing that, you know, it be, it kind of became, we grew organically. We have, until this year, we had not put a dollar into marketing. It's all been word of mouth, thanks to good people like yourself. Shut the front and door. So Yelp and wow. the social media and just people telling their friends. And, you know, that is only sustainable for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've just had to figure so much out that, I, and I, I didn't, you know, I always say, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never owned a company before, you know, and it's okay to, you know, admit that and ask for help and ask questions and all those things. But I, I really started to doubt myself more. And I think it's because I was finally actually thinking about the company as opposed to like getting in there and just, you know, I'm, I'm a total workhorse. So if you just like, I'm just do that. I'm, I'm happy about it. But that, was not serving the company anymore. Mm-hmm. I needed to be out front guiding the train as opposed to like holding on to the side of it as it barreled down the tracks, you know? So it was like, I had to figure that out. And so that's when the doubt came in. So as far as the inner work, like, you know, a lot of therapy, mm-hmm. go to therapy every <laughs> week to talk about, you know, cause it's, we do, we all doubt ourselves. And why I think it's, do we do that? I don't know why we do. Like and if it, it came to us and yeah. we have the ability, like just do, right? Yeah. But we, we all do that. Um, and it's a shame, but cause I think we're all incredibly capable. Like um, we're amazing freaking beings. Yeah. Like whether we're physically creating life from our body, we create life every day. Yeah. I mean, you're taking, I'm just guessing, listen, this is not a part of the ingredients. I have not, <laughs> I don't have the book in front of me, but you're taking salt. You're taking, you know, chocolate chips and walnuts and strawberries and bananas, and then you're making magic. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what do we get in the point that we lose our magic? You know, there's yeah. this film that I love. Um, I love animated films. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's this one, have you heard of Onward? No. It's a Disney film. Oh my gosh, please watch it, Courtney. I will. <clears throat> I also love animated ones. <sighs> it's my shiznails. Okay. <laughs> Onward. But Onward, it talks about, um, listen, if you haven't seen it, well, too bad. I'm not going to give everything, but I'm going to tell you something. Okay. Um, it talks about how we, uh, it's just like this magical land. So imagine like elves and wizards and tinkerbells or whatever, fair, whatever the things are. Um, you know how usually they fly or wizards may, you know, use their wand and cut on a light. Well, in the beginning of the film, it showed like everybody in their magical sense. And they said at some point, people lost their magic. 
So mm-hmm. rather than the little tinker fairies, I keep saying tinker bell, but the little fairy things. Yeah. <laughs> rather than them just flying. Tinker fairies. Tinker fairies. <laughs> rather than them just flying, they're all ganging up on a motorcycle to go. And mm-hmm. rather than the wizard just hitting the wand, he's going up to a light switch and they're like, oh, this is magic. And it's like, at some point, mm-hmm. we lose that mm-hmm. zhuzh or maybe we turn our head to forget it or something. I love that. It's so funny. I just went to um, a weekend away with um, several girlfriends that are also business owners and we made vision boards. Come on. And I literally put, I found the words that say making room for magic on my vision board. <laughs> Dog it. <laughs> so it's, we, it, it's really important. And there, and there, it, there can be magic in the everyday. Everything doesn't have to be life changing, but Opening yourself up to that and allowing it to guide you is really important. And there were, you know, I don't know how deep we want to go. But Honey, we can go there, as deep as there the have been rocks. times where you know that have been incredibly difficult in this journey. And I had no room for magic, and I didn't know if I wanted to keep going. And you know, I was. Courtney, so, what happened? What did it look like? Because somebody's going to look at you and be like, oh. She just has her business there. Oh my gosh, marketing everywhere. They're shipping nationwide. Now she has a big book. No, what are you talking about? What uh, happened? I'm talking about working 90 to 100 hours a week. How I'm is that talk- possible? It's possible when you don't have, you know, people like we went through some some transitional times and it was, we had to keep the doors open. And so that was me going in at two in the morning to bake and staying there until, you know, nine o'clock at night to close up. And driving in in the morning at two o'clock thinking, oh, if I just, you know, crashed my car, I would be able to rest in the hospital, Mm. (laughs) you know, didn't want to die. But just thinking like it was, it was really, really hard. And I just kept, kept going. I just kept going. I just kept telling, like, I just, but I, I, I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, it was like, I don't, I don't know. So, okay. So here we are. We're in this situation. It's hard, right? Yeah. And you said you did not know if you wanted to go. Heck, you you looking for any option just to take a breather. Yeah. What is it that made you keep going? Why? Well, honestly speaking, you think like, oh, the dead or people are expecting order. Why? Why didn't you just stop? I, because I really believe in it. I really believe in it. And I just knew that like, I knew it couldn't continue like this, but that there had to be a way. And I knew that... Um, and I, I felt a great sense of responsibility to those who work for me. You know, I'm support, they're supporting themselves by getting the paycheck with me every two weeks. And there were, there were a lot of customers. I, you know, I just, I didn't want to let anybody down and I didn't, I just, I'm not a quitter. I didn't want to give up, but, um, but it's interesting because I threw, I, I didn't have room for the magic and I, think in my quest to make everyone else joyful joy I lost joy for myself in that process and so I had to kind of rediscover the joy of the business also that's what (laughs) oh wow um (laughs) that's real and I think a lot of people oftentimes um we miss that what you just said and the thing that, um, see, I don't think you can find happiness, but you can resurface your joy because happiness is a fleeting, but joy is a state of being. Mm. And I think it was just so interesting that even when you get dismayed, even when you want to go left, you're supposed to go right, hypothetically, you want to go a different situ- or a different way. Mm-hmm. You came back to the source. Mm-hmm. And just like when we talked about earlier, just starting on the mm-hmm. podcast, you said this was something that came as a child and it makes sense mm-hmm. when we talk about the comparison to Onward because you had nothing clouding your vision. It was just something that you felt. Mm-hmm. And you kept, you, you've consistently been using the word love. And it just makes sense how they say how love is one of the most powerful things because no matter what, that's the same thing that you've been searching for and you've been seeking. Like, I mean, essentially, whether, you know, with yourself and it's first sweet cheeks and now milk jar cookies and having it manifest and, and how things extended through with your husband. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that they, that's why they say love is the way, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It will help you out of times and get you out of things that you had no idea. Yeah. And this, this belief process, who, who, who was the first person that told you about believing? Um, my parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
we grew up in the uh, Methodist church. So there was that aspect of belief, but then a lot of belief in dreams and, you know, my, they're dreamers too. And think through my gymnastics, like believing in myself and, you know, it's 80% mental, 20% physical, like uh-huh. the, all those things um, were messages that were either outwardly being spoken or just implied. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have this mantra, you say uh, <clears throat> progress over perfection. Mm-hmm. And that was something. I don't know if it's mine, but I, I, I definitely. You uh, live by it, right? Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> what is, what has that process been like in this journey? Because the perfection always has to be right. I have to have all the money. Yeah. And it was everything opposite of that. And being that, you know, you travel, not travel in your life, but growing up in a world where perfection, where hitting the numbers, hit the landing, hit the position. What was that like for you? And why is that so important now, that mantra? Because I, I think perfectionism in, it helped establish my brand mm. because the, you know, our cookies, in my opinion, taste perfect. They look perfect. Yes. They're beautiful yes. creations. Luscious. And the way we package them, you know, like we spend a lot of time training people on how to perfectly make the box look, you know, so it doesn't look a mess. And so there's a lot of that, but, As far as building a business, I think in some ways my quest for perfection got in my way because Mm. it was, you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect and there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be, you know, that's the cost of doing business. And as long as you, you know, make them right and, you know, do what's right and making it better, then you move forward and you learn from it and it's okay. But I think being a business owner has helped with that perfectionism because it's just, it's just a reality. It's never going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think as a business, we go very far above and beyond and we get as close to it as we can. Um, And so I think, yeah, the progress over perfection is something I try to tell myself regularly because it's like you know well thank you no because if you probably would have stayed in the perfection realm I wouldn't have had a chance to um be a part of your dream and your gifts Mm -hmm. it's so interesting that so many people I feel like they say and I know I'm we we're supposed to be taking a break hold on let me finish (laughs) (laughs) so many people talk um or they, they, they're they afraid to get started or they don't start because they say it has to be perfect mm-hmm. and it has to look right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, Courtney, I'm sitting here across on you and I'm like, you started your joint. I say joint, your business. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you started your business in a closet and I tell people all the time, vitamin D started under a comforter. Mm-hmm. And it was no air conditioning in New York. <laughs> I have my comforter, my USB mic, and I'm literally breathing, sweating, wiping the sweat. Today's dose of vitamin D is dedicated to, mm-hmm. and I can look back at what we almost got like 10 years later about where it is right now. And I try to tell people all the time, stop majoring in the minor. Like you said, just get it done. Yeah. It's, I mean, you, you won't ever start. It's like, you know, there's so many things that people tell you, like, if you wait to have enough money, you'll never have a baby. And like, there's all those things. Like, if you wait to have a perfect plan, you're never going to start whatever it is you're doing. And, you know, I wrote this business plan and I was able to, you know, get what I needed from it and have some kind of guidepost. But the day, the first day that, I mean, it it all went out the window. I like, it was going to be my husband and I, as the only employees for the first six months. Yeah. We hired two people a week later, you know, it's like, (laughs) it all goes out the window, but at least it was something, you know, to guide. So it's like, yeah, just, and I have pivoted and turned and, you know, I pretzeled myself like, but you just gotta, you gotta go with it and, and just keep and trust your gut. But, you know, you you gotta keep it. when you hear your gut? Like, how do you know when it's the right decision versus fear? It's usually pretty loud. I feel Is like. it? I don't know. No, well, no, not always. It just, but I think like, it's, it, and if I make the wrong, if you look back, you're like, oof, yep, mm. I knew. Mm. I knew. Right, and it's like, you I should have caught it. Yeah, but then, and you're not always going to make the right decision. But as long, again, as long as you learn from it and you're like, okay, gotcha. and then you don't do it that way next time or you you know, see what it was, then that's sometimes even more valuable than 
doing it right the first time. Could you imagine you know? if you came out here trying to start milk jar cookies <laughs> and forgetting to put the baking soda in there? Would not go well. Hello, somebody. And we, and we've done it, you know, as a business. Like not two weeks ago, it's like one of the batches got, and, you know, that stinks. But you just throw Keep the dough going. away and you start over. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, and when you don't catch it, that can be a problem. But it was in, but it's just further down the line. But again, you can still, you can still recover from it. You mm-hmm. know, there's not like I would say we're not curing cancer, but we're making it easier to deal with. You know, like we have like. The, the stakes feel very high because we value our customers so much and we work so hard to make sure that every experience is a good one. And it, it stinks when you make a mistake, but also like we are human beings and we're going to make mistakes. And the only thing we can control is how we respond to that mm-hmm. and make sure that we do everything in our power to, you know, apologize and make it right and then learn from it. Mm-hmm. You know, was it just a, a biff, okay, then not, not much to learn other than like, okay, remember to focus and let's do our thing. Or was it a problem with the process or our, you know, systems? And if so, then great, let's fix it. And know? but and the thing is, is that you have your goal on what you're trying to do. So oftentimes I think we get so stuck on the mistake or stuck on what happened. It's like, well, how mm-hmm. do we get closer to the vision? Because, mm-hmm. you know, 2020 taught us all of that. Everybody had to pivot. <laughs> you could not stop. No. Um, you had to figure out another way to either look at it or another way to decide, make a choice and be intentional about how you want to move with your life. Mm-hmm. And I guess it just boils down to what do you want? Mm hmm. And sometimes that's a hard thing to decide. And it and, then, and again, I I remember right before I opened, I looked at my husband, I was like, what if I hate this? And he was like, well, then, you know, you, you might. <laughs> you know? And then we what, figure out what's a, next. Wait, you just you sacrifice know? your entire life, but that's a reality. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. people need to realize that you have the ability to change your mind about something. Yeah. And that's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And there might be days that you hate it, but then... You don't really hate it. You know, it's just a rough day. So knowing at what point, you know, if you have a whole lot of days where you don't like it, then maybe that's not the path for you. <laughs> but you, will you never know? know unless you try. But you got to try. You got to mm-hmm. get out there and try. All right, guys, yeah. we're going to take a quick <laughs> break. Um, we have some milk jar cookies in here with the founder, the creator, the everything, the entrepreneur, the head woman in charge <laughs> Courtney Cowan um, yes. and it's going to be a yummy we have a more of a sweet conversation coming right here on the Vitamin D with Dante podcast hey this is your girl Shirley Strawberry how you doing hi everybody this is Jasmine Bird coming to you from the Vitamin D with Dante podcast you call her Dawn Day I call her love and light keep shining Dawn keep shining guys guys we're back we're back <sighs> I'm in the studio right now um, with Courtney Cowan. She is the CEO and founder of Milk Jar Cookies, um, a self-taught baker, just FYI. Mm-hmm. I'll have you know that. And um, a self-taught baker, all about extending joy. Mm-hmm. So like, her, you know, her love of baking is just extending joy to you and it's coming in the form of her cookies. Um, and uh, she's a powerful woman uh, with a message about belief about going after your dreams and really understanding the importance of having progress over perfection. So we're back. Hey, Courtney. Hello. We got some delicious cookies in front of us. Yes, we do. I'm salivating. <laughs> um, we have sprinkle. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell us all the flavors that we see here. Okay. And we, they can find all of these in the store? Yes. In okay. the store, um, online, you can order for pickup, delivery, or nationwide shipping on our website. MilkJarCookies.com. Catch it. Um, and all of the flavors are on there. Um, so, okay. We've got birthday cookie there. Mm. We've got white chocolate macadamia, mm. oatmeal raisin, mint chocolate, cinnamon sugar, chocolate chip, banana split, what? chocolate covered banana. Let's see what we got up here. Rocky Road. Rocky. What's in? Oh, that's the marshmallow and chocolate. What's in there? And rock- almonds and um, marshmallow. I missed the memo with all, you know, I love a good nut in my Mm -hmm. cookie. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yes. I did not know that. That's one of my favorites. Really? Yes. And then chocolate chip walnut is, I feel like chocolate chip walnut loses some like PR because it has such a famous cousin with chocolate chip. 
Wow. You know, everybody just goes for that. But like chocolate chip walnut, those walnuts. Up Yo, the, the wa- game. listen, the walnuts. Okay, listen. They like, buy like a sweetness. It's like, they, it does mm, a little cut just to mm, change it. It flattens so it out. And then guess what? You get surprised with the uh, the chocolate chip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you go back to the dough. Yep. And then the so experience good. happens all over again. So good. Oh, um, wow. Now, let right. me ask you this. Have you ever thought about a chocolate? Don't you have a chocolate chip oatmeal? Mm-hmm. Can we throw some walnuts in there? For you? Yes. I was, you, I was, you know, <laughs> it can be called the Dawn Special, but I've really yes. been thinking about that because I really love the texture that the oatmeal's, mm-hmm. oatmeal gives. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with the regular dough and then the chocolate chip, and I'm like, ooh, if I got a little walnut, I love listen, that idea. just something to think about. Now, I understand you have a special that's out right now, right? Yes, chocolate covered banana. So it's a, this was inspired by my dad's love. As kids, we would always go to Dairy Queen and you'd always get a chocolate covered banana as the frozen treat. So I love taking other sweets and desserts and making them in cookie form. So this is an example of that. Oh, wow. So it's like a chocolate banana dough with dried banana chips, a chocolate drizzle, and some crushed peanuts. So good. What? Yeah. And if you eat it cold, it tastes like the real thing. So good. Okay. So what is the best way to eat the cookies? Or is this... What is the Courtney way? I like them warm. How do you warm them? Because I always, you know, I'll put them in the oven. Yes. I always prefer oven over microwave. If you're short on time, go microwave like 15 seconds. Delicious. But if you have the time, 350 oven for five minutes. That's it? Okay. You know what I just, my husband and I just did not too long ago though? Air fryer. Wait, what? Oh yeah. We put a cookie straight from the freezer. Because I like when there's leftovers, you know, or I would just bring them home. I'll put them in the freezer. Uh Uh-huh. Straight from the freezer, three minutes in the air fryer. Oh, it was the rocky road, so it even toasted the marshmallow even oh, more. It was so good. I tasted it. Oh, and then, oh, you want a surprise mm-hmm. with the almond? Mm-hmm. Catch it. Oh, my so goodness. So good. Yeah, but I definitely prefer heat, reheating them in the oven. So each of our boxes, if you buy the box, it comes with a, reheat, a storage or reheating card. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I would suggest. And then you guys also, um, I don't know if it's a new thing, but it's new because I haven't gotten it yet. But you guys are selling the cookie cakes. Cookie cakes. Yes. We launched those in January. I saw mm-hmm. that. Two so sizes, good. a smaller size and a larger size. Yes. What is the difference? Is there any taste or difference between the cookie and the cookie cake? No. The okay. cookie itself tastes exactly the same. And then you add frosting to that. Come on. I mean, Let's win. so good. Um, so, yeah, so we have um, chocolate chip, birthday, and cinnamon sugar. And mm-hmm. then our gluten free and vegan also come in the cookie cakes. And then we also do a cake each month with our seasonal, which is the chocolate covered banana right now. So you Ooh. can like it. Well, what's the seasonal. next one? Uh, next month is going to be our inside out chocolate chip, which is chocolate dough with white chips. Nice. Mm-hmm. Tastes like a chocolate pop tart. Oh, so catch it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it. on this break, we had a chance to listen to one. Well, I say one of your favorite tracks. You were talking to Jeremiah, mm-hmm. and you told him about this track uh, by Miranda Lambert entitled yes. "Settling Down." Yes. Now there was a couple things that I saw that stood out as far as lyrics, because you know, Vitamin D started out with the lyrics of popular music and in fact uh, um, twice a week I send out the quick doses which is like just an inspirational talk about music and sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like um, music sometimes speaks a language that I a language everybody can understand you can yes. just feel it right I'm big on music like, like my my mom taught all like we none of us really play an instrument <laughs> but we can dance and we we just love music can and you like, sing Oh, God, I wish. Oh, I thought you was like, girl, yes. I was like, oh my No, gosh. <laughs> I wish I could sing. I'm really bad. Um, but I I do anyway in my house and Hello. in my car. <laughs> um, but no, music just, it speaks. I've always been like a fangirl. Like I just love, love, love music. And so actually in my bake book, there's QR codes that lead to playlists. So you can what? have playlists for when you're baking and like, Yeah. Music is like the additional ingredient for baking that is necessary. Right. The whole vibe. Yeah. So um, you were yeah. telling Jeremiah about a track by Miranda Lambert entitled Settling Down. Mm-hmm. And it was it's so interesting that even the title that she's talking about settling down, but everything in the song is like not with settling down. Yeah. And um, one thing I, I guess I thought about you, uh, she said her bare feet on the tile while my head is up in, in the, the clouds. clouds. Yeah. It's like you're dreaming, but manifesting a dream. Tell, what does that mean to you? I think that song, to me, it's like the dichotomy in me. Where it's like, I 
I could absolutely tomorrow live on a big plot of land and raise goats and chickens and like be in the like green. And, but I also love the city and love, you know, hard charging it every day where Mm -hmm. it's just like make it. So there's this like, and that's to me what she is talking about in that song. Like there's another line in the song, like I could love a picket fence if it wrapped around around the the world, world. you know? And so it's like that. So the, the feet on the bare feet on the tile with a head up in the clouds, that is, um, to me, I think it's like knowing, like being content, but also like in your current place, but also still dreaming, Mm. you know? So it's like, you can, you can be where you are, but like, you're not, doesn't mean all you have to think about is your kitchen, like head up in the clouds. Still, like let let your let your mind wander. Dream, dream big dreams. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Um. When I lived in New York, <clears throat> there was a gentleman. He's a speaker as well. And one of the quotes that he says is that your location is not your destination. Mm-hmm. So wherever you are right now, you know whatever it is that you're going after. Mm-hmm. Don't try to stop yourself like there isn't more out there. Right. And the fact that even in another way or another lens of looking at what you said of how my feet may be on the kitchen towel, but I can still dream. Mm -hmm. To me, it all says too that don't be afraid to dream and then walk it out. Mm -hmm. Like you taking this dream, the freaking Rocky, Rocky Road, right? Rocky Road. Wait, was it? No, the banana was inspired by your dad, but you just took something up there and you said, let me bring it down where it is. And it's like, I think when we talk about the magic, when we talk about the belief system, that thing that whatever you're pulling from has to keep you consistently going because, Courtney, we're not dead yet. No. So if you're not living your dreams full out, mm-hmm. if you're not doing what you want to do, why not? Because you're not dead. Right. And if you're not dead, it's not over, right? Right. And one thing I have talk a lot about um, is the balance between like being content and being ambitious. Mm, talk to me. But I think it's like, you know, you don't want to be discontent your whole life, but you also want to keep reaching for more. So like, where, where is that line mm-hmm. is something I think about a lot. That is a flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and even just like, you know, your thinking process of how you've gone with how you decided to approach your dreams, you took it to the next level and really highlighted, underlined, um, exclamation point, exclamatory, whatever the <laughs> word is about uh, taking your dreams to the next level. And one thing I talk about and how I coined myself over the years, I would say I'm the life bank account expert. And after each podcast, I remind people how you are your greatest asset. Mm -hmm. And essentially what that means is if you have a bank account, Mm -hmm. you know how much money you're putting in, you know what kind of deposit versus liability. Mm -hmm. And you never can control. It's not going to always be one way or the other. Heck, you know, if you want to establish credit, you got to have some debt. Mm -hmm. But the key is the balance. Mm -hmm. And when you have in mind how you are your greatest asset, there's a way that you treat yourself because everything is an extension of you and an extension of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, even when it comes to yourself, like um, you said, or I read that you had taken a class at Goldman Sachs, like you decided to invest in your life. Mm -hmm. Was this when you had made the decision to write the business plan on your back? Or when did this come about? This actually just happened last year. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it was supposed to start, um, it was going to be an in-person class at LA City College. It's a program that it's an um, scholarship program that Goldman Sachs offers and it's called 10,000 Small Businesses. And so it's, um, you apply for it. And um, if you're accepted, it's a free program and it's essentially kind of like a 14 week intensive, um, like micro MBA kind of where you, but instead of working on a fictional widget factory, you're working on your business. And you, your thesis project, if you will, is a five-year growth plan for your business. And so um, that was supposed to start at LA City College March 19th, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Suffice to say, that did not happen. Um, so they figured out how to make it all online. And then we actually ended up starting it a year ago, like this week, um, and then finished it in December. And that was, um, it was very intense, uh, but so valuable and just... Um, incredible. And actually the retreat I was talking about that I just went on with the fellow business owners was um, four ladies from that class oh, um, that wow. we've just kind of formed a, a bond. And, and somebody could have looked at you like, Courtney, you already have your business. Why are you taking extra classes? What did you get from the class? Just this growth plan that... And, uh, growth, it, it, catch it. Yeah. Consistently growing, right? Yes. And it just finally, it made me 
Because, you know, there's the old adage of like, you need to be working on your business, not in your business. Well, hmm. for which means like I was for years and years, shoulder to shoulder in there, baking cookies, packing boxes, doing whatever. But the company will not, you know, it's kind of that cross, like I was talking about earlier, where it's like, I needed to get in front of the train and I needed to guide us where we were going. We had just been, you know, the business was kind of telling me what it was going to be mm. for all those years. And so, which was wonderful because it was growing and it was doing, you know, it was like, I just had to kind of always catch up. Um, and then I applied for this, this program and it forced me to look at my business differently. It forced me to not be in the shop because it, it was, you know, four days a week I had either an online class. A, 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 I mean, it was all online, but like either the full group, our small groups, a partner exercise. Like it was, it was really intense. And then there was homework. So it was like all of these things and having a different view of my business, a bird's eye view and really thinking of t- intentionally thinking about what is my exit plan? You know, do I want, what do I want this business to be? What do I, you know, do I want to sell it someday? Do I want, and we should just do it until we, um, that is something that that in the first week of class, they have you figure out what, because then that guides everything, which is really fascinating and it's really important. So it's like, and the exit plan doesn't have to be that you actually exit, but it, you know, at some point, you know, even if you choose to do this, forever someday we will exit this world <laughs> and so if you wanted to keep going what does that look like do you want to sell it to your employees do you want to you know just what what do you want it where do you want it to be how do you want it to to continue on um if that's if that's what you choose um, i love that because it's just essentially like stepping into the realm of why you would go there because you had a vision for the business right and just like us we don't stop growing so it's like okay Mm-hmm. Keep going. What happens after that? And then right. what's happening after that? Thank you for sharing yeah, that. Definitely. Um, it was an, it was a really an amazing experience. And it, it I came out of it with this five-year growth plan that, you know, we're trying to tackle. And uh it's it's it feels good to put, you know, because it's a it's a different it can be, especially I think when you start something as a passion project mm. and just from that you don't start it to be a, you know. Yes, I'm very aware that it's a business, you know, but like you don't start it with, you know, venture capital and all, you know, it's just like, it's just this from a place of love and, yeah. and your hobby kind of. So having the, um, the ability to, to really think about what you want it to be. Um, and then maybe you just want it to stay small and that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. And it's then just maybe you want to take you over want, the world. Right? Yeah. And from there, you can plan, you know, otherwise you're just, you know, again, like I use the analogy of like, you know, holding on to the side of the train, like in the old, you know, cartoons. Yeah. But yeah, so that that is what I did and what I got out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how many times... Um, you know, we, we, we're so quick to jump into something, but not really thinking about, you know, what's to come after, I guess, stepping out of that process and, mm-hmm. and what that feels like. And to know that someone like, as such as yourself, who's been in the process, um, starting it mm-hmm. and then consistently and constantly thinking of ways how to up level, how to curate. And I think that's just the epitome of just being a boss. Like, mm-hmm. what does it feel like to be like, you're an entrepreneur. You are... You, I like to consider like perhaps we can even call this time that we're in like the era of the woman like just I'm okay with that <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. if so do you think it's a time now to see more female entrepreneurs and do you do you have a pride or a sense that you're for that and why uh, I'm very for it um going into this experience I didn't again I know I'm a woman but I didn't like I didn't see that as a benefit or a hindrance. Like I didn't, I didn't, okay. it didn't come into my thinking. It was just like, I am who I am and this is what I'm going to do. But yes. being through, you know, going through this and I think there's a lot of messaging out there now um, about female entrepreneurship and, you know, a lot of it is great. But I think w- what I would like to see is a more full scope a more full picture presented to 
females who want to start a business, not like, you know, mm. you're going to create your own hours. And like, that's, that's not sis. That's not it. That's not it. And you will, like I've said, there's 24 hours in a day and you'll use every single one of them. You know, like I've worked several 36 to 39 hour days in my journey here. You know, like, so it's, um, it, it, I just think there needs to be a little bit more of an education for not just the highlight reel, you know, like mm-hmm. the, that kind of thing. Um, so that I, but I, I absolutely love um, supporting, you know, different organizations that are, you know, trying to get and oh, support yeah? women. Uh, yeah. We're, we're very charitable. At well, talk too, what are you guys great. doing? Yeah. Oh, I mean, we, it usually comes in the form of cookies. Um, that yes. We'll Cause we always have to keep it sweet. Take yes. the sweets to the streets. I'm so, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Take the sweets to the streets. Um, but yes, I mean, we every we we try our best to never say no. It's a lot, but anything to do with education, female empowerment, um, mm-hmm. women's rights, um, any groups that feel um, perhaps um, not as much love coming their way, we'll, just... we'll drop cookies off. And, you know, if we have leftovers, that's what we tend to do. We like, you know, we have a people that come pick them up on Mondays to take them to, you know, the homeless shelters but we also will just make small drops um you know to various organizations um wow thank you yeah oh, thank you for doing that absolutely and just you know you just i mean just spread the about, cookie love right because you, know? <laughs> you just never know i guess like you know you could be saving someone's life like i know and it, it sounds mm-hmm. so simple you know a yeah. cookie but you hear it all the time sometimes a hello a smile Yep, And to know that you took something that literally your hands made, like your dreams mm-hmm. manifested and you're like, let me give it. Yeah. It's, you're like it's <sighs> and in some way, I mean, I just feel like as a member of the community, it's you have a responsibility it's, mm-hmm. is how I see, you know, being being a business in, in Los Angeles is being able to the community supports us. So we need to support the community. Or as it's all synergy flow, let's give back and pull forward, lift as we climb. Yeah. So are there any um, initiatives as far as like inside the company, inside Milk Jar Cookies mm-hmm. that you, is it, do you primarily hire women or is it for all or? Oh, anybody that, okay. yeah, anybody who wants to come and be part of our mission and, you know, we, we tend to get more females apply, um, but we definitely have, you know, had many guys and, you know, it's anybody who wants to come and be part of that and, and work hard and, mm-hmm. and, and joyful every day. Well, who wants to put their it. hand in the milk jar bar? That's right. <laughs> and no, no experience. I mean, we're going to teach you everything you need to know. So like, you know, a lot of people will be intimidated if they've never baked in a commercial environment. I had never baked in a commercial environment. Wait, I, what? Oh, wait, you left that out. Yeah. I no, guess it made, why you were just in your kitchen. Just in my kitchen. I'd never even used a stand mixer until I got a 30 quart mixer. <laughs> I had always done it by uh, a hand mixer. So it's, I mean, everything that anybody, we're going to teach you. So if you just love to bake and you want to make people happy, gosh, come and join us. Love, <laughs> happiness, yeah. joy. That's milk jar cookies. I mean, I don't know how many people can say like they are, uh, they, they, they jump into a business and, uh, or, you know, support a business that's all about just specifically love and joy. Like that is the brand and the business sells itself uh, just being love and joy. And I guess if someone is like, you know, they want to create their own joy, you mentioned before, and I want to circle back with that you have a bake book. I do. Tell us about it. Yes, I. Um, it came out last October uh, with Rizzoli Publishing. And congratulations! Thank you. Yes, it was really. It was such a such a labor of love, and I just um, a woman had reached out to me, uh, Carla Glasser. She's now my literary agent. Hello, um, <laughs> which sounds really funny, but um, she's wonderful, and she had um, read an article, or, you know, an interview with me back in the spring of 2017, and reached out asking if I would ever want to write a cookbook. And I met with her, and I wasn't quite ready at the time, but um, we kept in touch. And then uh, I guess it was January of 2019. I emailed her and just said, hey, I think I'm ready, you know? And so um, she said, send me a proposal. So I wrote a book proposal and sent it over and she shopped it around and Rizzoli 
picked it. And um, yeah, so then I wrote the book and it's got um, all my cookie recipes. It's got cakes, pies, breakfast bakes, no bake Mm -hmm. treats. It's like a little bit of everything Mm -hmm. Um, and for every skill level. And I wanted it to be very approachable um, because I'm not a fancy baker and by any stretch of the imagination. So I, I didn't want people to be intimidated by it. So there's no like double boilers or anything like that. Like it's, it's pretty approachable and things that you will likely have, you know, tools that you'll have in your, in your kitchen. And there's some more complicated ones, but, um, but yeah, it's just, uh, and I, I really wanted to do that because I wanted people to have that Three pronged happiness. Surprise. Oh my gosh, this is the bank. I didn't realize the bank book was right here. Oh, girl, I brought you one. This is a yes. Bank book, guys. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. As you were saying. Uh, yeah. So it's got, you can see a little bit of everything. We got some coffee cake and they're all, um, I also have recipes in there that um, oh, wow. women in my life have, have provided. So like my, um, my Aunt Susie's banana bread is in there and my, Friend Amanda's um, grief biscuits. That's a great story of someone who healed her broken heart by just putting her hands to work and coming up with her the best biscuit um, after her mom passed. And so that's in there. And just uh, my mom's cinnamon rolls. And but other than that, it's all my cookies and <laughs> <laughs> photographed by Ashley Maxwell. Uh, so beautiful. Say, your social media, your account, it's in. Hackable. That's one oh, thing that Jeremiah you. and I were talking about. And I think I saw you tag like who the photographer was, but yeah. your presentation. And, oh, and the thing you. is, how often do you see someone take a picture of something and you actually go to the store and it looks like that? Milk jar cookies. Thank you. Yes. Um, she's incredible. And I, Ashley was actually uh, my husband and I's wedding photographer. Oh my <laughs> And we gosh. became really good friends with her and um, stayed in touch. So she's done um, several shoots. Uh, she actually was just here last month and we did a big shoot. Um for more pictures, but yes, uh, she and oh, I. Oh, and there's muffins in here. Yeah, and there's lots, there's breakfast stuff. There's puddings, pies, pies cakes, all kinds of stuff. So wait, does this mm-hmm. mean that um, there's a possibility that milk jar cookies could expand to milk jar bake or milk? I don't what think so. I think we'll like I will I will stick with the cookies um, as the business. Like I mean, but now we have cookie cakes. You know, and mm-hmm. I always say never say never. Never but, say never. Um, but the cookies and the cookie cakes keep us pretty busy. Um, but I just, I love baking other things. Um, so I wanted to, I came up with lots of other recipes for people. Thank, and if I, uh, when I open first open the book, I love this uh, one page that you talked about what the, each of the ingredients are for. I saw like the butter. Yeah, there's some helpful hints butter in milk. there. Like, I, mm-hmm. like for someone like myself, I, I mean, I cook, but not like that. And I hear like, yeah. there's different kind of cooks. You got the bake cook and then you got like, Yes. Yeah. Cooking can be more spontaneous. Baking is so you specific. Be on it, and, yeah, right? Because there's such a chemistry to it that any anything that's off, it can really mess it up. Um, but yeah, so I put some helpful hints and tricks in there and then um a little introduction and then Oh my lots, gosh, I love this, guys. I mean, she gives you an idea so you can understand your ingredients as far as what comes with the baking, like the the principles, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then also the equipment that you need so you don't have to worry about like, ah, I don't know where to start. Yeah. And it represents everything. Courtney, gosh, dog on it. <laughs> the reason <laughs> I appreciate your brand because you're showing up exactly what you're putting out. From the moment you walked in, you said why you wanted your cookies to feel like they're accepting of all, even down to your saying what your love is. So it's like, it's not a thing where, you know, sometimes you can go to the gym and you're like, oh, I'm intimidated. I feel at ease. Okay. Um, starting with your welcoming, beautiful smile to the packaging of the cookies, there's care, there's nurture. You're so intentional. And it, no wonder why we start. you started at 2013 on Wilshire mm-hmm. and you're here now and it's 2021. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. I, I just don't think a lot of people realize how important it is enough to take a chance on yourself. And my gosh, to see what happens after that. Mm-hmm. What can come of that? Like, even I'm just curious, getting to the point where you opened your store, was that first day everything that you thought it was going to be? Oh, it was more. It was so crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Well, we had like this soft open scheduled for April 10th and 11th where we were going to tell our friends. Wait, what happened on the 16th? That was the grand opening. Oh, okay. Okay. So the 10th and 11th was supposed to be so that I didn't know how to use the cash register. Wait, what? I didn't know how to use any. So it was like, okay, can y'all <laughs> just come so we can like run through this, right? 
um, well, somehow word got out that we were opening and we had a line of people on the 10th. And thank goodness I had a friend, Amy, who worked in restaurants and she wasn't working at the time. So she was helping um, because she figured out the the POS system. She was like, oh, yeah, I hear this is pretty point of sale, (laughs) point of sale, the couch register. So I was just like, oh, my gosh. And I I mean, we it just from the get go was like. It took off. Um, so then, yeah, we sold out by... You, you know, sold out, Courtney? Yes. And then on the 16th, we sold out by... like even, And we I like st- pulled an all-nighter. It was one of my first all-nighters. Um, making as much dough as possible. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to have plenty. And like, I'll be a... No. Sold out by like 2 o'clock and had to put a sign. And then we were like, okay, well, we're making more. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back. What so. did that feel like? What? Oh, it was so surreal. It was so surreal. And, you know, and you're just, there's kind of like that, you know, the fog of war, you know, where you're just like, <laughs> you're, I was, it was a little foggy, a little, but you're just like in it and you, you know, adrenaline is a beautiful thing. Um, and you just, you just go and you just figure it out. You figure um, it out, Joe. Yeah. Stop tripping. Stop thinking that you have to have it together. Just give yourself enough grace to figure it out step by step, right? That's right. Ingredient by ingredient. Ingredient by ingredient. And My it's dad okay. always said, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a dog on time. Yeah. So that's that's a, that's a mantra. <laughs> when things get too big, you're just like, okay, what's the first bite? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I got I want you to take a bite after something. Um, I have something I call like a, <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> it's called the Vita Box. Um, and the Vita Box, of course, a pun off of vitamin D. Um, but basically I have a list of terms in here and of mm. course for you they're going to be baking terms okay. and you know just how you were talking about how to eat an elephant one bite at a time I put some terms in here okay and I'm just curious whatever inspires you to whatever comes to mind okay I want you to share it okay. so it's like first so it's one of those like word association kind of things it's whatever you want to be whatever it wants to be okay you're Got a creator it. I'm your word I'm just living in it okay okay she can't see she's shuffling guys Fermentation. Ooh. Mm. I would say, I mean, hmm. what can we get inspiration out of fermentation? I mean, it's very important. And is it? Wine. Yeah. <laughs> I like wine. Um, we don't do a lot of fermented, but I, I, maybe I don't understand the, the task. I'm just supposed to tell you well, what I'm. Yeah, whatever comes to mind. So when okay. you think of like, okay, so we say fermentation, whether it comes from wine, mm-hmm. you just notice how when things sit for a bit, it mm-hmm. has a minute to settle. So whether you're mm-hmm. settling with your dreams, allow it to sit. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to share it thinking that it's old because understanding okay. as time yes. goes on, there's something special. And sometimes even though it's growing bacteria, okay. it's good bacteria. Good bacteria. So the good, the bad can actually be good. Hello, somebody. Hey, what they okay. say what allows a diamond to shine mm-hmm. are the multitudes of cuts that have been placed within it. Mm-hmm. All that pressure, pressure. Cut, cut, cut. Oh, yep. you step into the light. You shine. Indeed. Okay, let's try okay. another one. All right. Hopefully it's not a wine one. <laughs> <laughs> Blame see. Jeremiah. I'm only calling him out because I can't. Okay. Okay, here we go. Emulsion. Man, you went. What, you went in. Yeah. Um, I don't even, what does emulsion mean? Do you know? <laughs> I mean, there's like emulsifiers and things, but um, maybe we'll go with more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's some like, it's some butter or something. Yeah, some, I'm impressed with your flower. vocabulary there, Jeremiah. <laughs> okay, let me see. Need. Like can we it. work with need? We can work with need. All right. What's so, need? Need, I mean, this, we don't need um, the cookies much. We do hand scoop and hand roll, but just the nature of cookie dough. Um we don't like need it. So kneading, um, man, it can be really therapeutic though. Like if you're making really? bread and you're like, you just like, just or your biscuits, pressure, yeah. like, yeah, you just get in there and like, it's just, it feel like it can just be like, you just get in the zone when you need, um, mm-hmm. you need the need. Mm-hmm. And press it on now and just push through. Because mm-hmm. essentially you're pushing through the dough. Yeah. You push through with your dreams. Push through with your dreams. Shoot, after a good workout, you want to push through the muscles. Yes, you All do. All right, let's see if we can yes, get another do. one. Yes, you do. Okay, let me see here. Caramelize. Okay. Okay. So this is, you know, again, the bat, like this is happens when you apply heat, you know? Ooh. So can't stand the heat. 
Don't get out the kitchen, just don't. caramelize. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it turns out all yeah. sweet. Exactly. Mm. It just it changes it. You know, it can change you take these ingredients, add the heat. Caramel. And caramelize it. Mm-hmm. And it becomes something sweet. It's just like, mm-hmm. I guess with all of us, like, you know, we all have something sweet to offer. Absolutely. You know, cooking up something special. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like maybe the the heat will reveal who you really are. Oh you know? wow. Mm-hmm. It's the process of transformation, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, and that was good. Well, yeah. is it Michelle Obama said it didn't uh being president didn't change who Barack was, it revealed who he was. Maybe the heat reveals listen who we are. And we're caramelized. Catch it. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, I am getting the I'm getting the hang of this. All right, let me, okay, let, me <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Okay. Oh, I don't even know what this means. Go again. <laughs> okay, from now okay. on, I am going to the terms. Because Jeremiah is trying to docking. I don't know what that was. Crumb coat. Mm. Okay. I don't know. You know. Okay. So this is when you're like making a cake, it's that first layer of icing so it's the crumb coat because there's likely going to be some crumbs and it just kind of covers up those crumbs so crumb coat i let's see with this exercise i would say progress over perfection hello that's what i'm going to say with crumb coat because it's not going to be perfect your crumb coat it's not going to be but you're it you're progressing because you're getting your cake iced yeah and then you can put the shiny layer on it and then it'd be one step close to being on my plate. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's real. We have some interesting words, but that's real. And I just feel like with anything in life, like you don't know what you're going to pull out. You don't know mm-hmm. what you're going to get. But I guess it's that perspective mm-hmm. and how you choose to see it and what you choose to make out of it. Like and it. you said, hey, I got my love. I like to bake. And let me make some milk jar cookies. That's right. Like, do you ever sit back, Courtney, and be like, you dope. Do you ever say that to yourself? And it's okay. Please use this moment right now. Because I, 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 I wish I could say that I do because I think it's so important and I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working on it. But no, I'm just always like charging Head forward down. and I don't, I don't, I don't celebrate that. That vision board I put on the back of it, celebrate yourself and others. I got a question. I, had, I was just talking about vision boards. Mm-hmm. Do you make one every year? No. I don't, I don't think I've ever made one. I've talked about making one, but I never have. I, guess I like I, the idea. I write my goals down. Okay. So when it's like a different, mm-hmm. it's words. It's still to like images, right, making but, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I thought about that because, you know, each year people are like, oh, make a new vision board, make a new vision board. Mm-hmm. But um, at what point do we get in the way of the vision? Because now if you're making one every year, you're saying like it has to happen at that time. And I don't know about you, Courtney. I don't want anything to happen before it's supposed to. Yes. Because why would it happen if I'm not ready to receive it? Absolutely. And um, even to me sitting right here, because I told you it started out under the cover and then I was doing a podcast at home. But a lot of things that are happening right now, right? The fact that you're sitting right here because I decided to put on a vision board, but it was a vision board that I made probably like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting because it's not a timeline board. It's a vision board. Right. So what do we, what are we getting away? We start rushing to try to put all the vision. It's just like, well, what do you see? And then Mm -hmm. taking the steps to, to, to give yourself grace as a reminder. Yeah. So for myself, I, I, I mean, if you continue on to do it, um, just allowing yourself to have grace, that is not like something that we have to do every year. I like that. Yeah, it was really fun. We just, we did it all together. And um, some people were like, uh, I don't know. But it was just, you know, it's a fun Courtney, exercise. It's and crazy like, when it starts manifesting. Yeah. Even down to how I decorated <laughs> my home. Really? Like I didn't even start yet. And I know that seems like obvious, but even whether it was someone was like, hey, I have this extra, just how the things were coming mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you got to realize what you can attract in your life. Because mm-hmm. I'm even sure you saying, I'm going to be bold out there and come with milk jar cookies that you probably attracted people that were coming out of the woodwork to support you. Mm-hmm. I think so. And I think people have definitely responded to that aspect of the business. Like they they can feel the heartfeltness and they, they like they want to support a place that is is doing that. And it's not disingenuous on our part. It's it really isn't. it's I it's told you woven, they were real. Yeah, it's woven through the fabric of of everything. And um so yeah, I think it's and that resonates with people. 
So while we all resonating and we're sitting on the edge, what's next? What is next? Um, well, we are looking to expand um, for sure. Like so more storefronts? More storefronts. In LA or? Um, I mean, the the goal is is nationwide. We need to bring, Catch you know, we, we ship nationwide, but I want people to be able to have the experience. So, um, so yeah, so I'm actually putting together a franchise plan. Um, to start a lot, uh, selling franchises and um, yeah, looking to just continue to increase. We just started with a marketing company and um, going to start getting the word out there and just, you know, continuing to to double down on what we do best, which is cookies and, and make sure that Spread we're getting the, the joy out there to as many mouths as possible. Mm, one taste bud at a time. <laughs> and let me just say, you know, sometimes I think people bring people on podcasts just to talk, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. I've been down with the get down since 2003. No, 2013. 13, yeah. Where did I get 2003 from? Oh, it was a three and a two and a zero. Yeah, whatever. But <laughs> either way, I'm just saying like overall, like um, I believe in your company to the core. Thank you so much. And the fact that even just having this conversation with you and how... um how authentic of how you say how you want it to be and being the fact that this is the first time I've met you I have received and experienced everything you're saying and to me like that's a victory overall and to know like it's not over Courtney like you are doing excuse me the damn thing <laughs> and you're showing so many young girls and women that we're possible Absolutely. And I can't tell you enough how much that means, especially having the Vitamin D with Dawn Day podcast and how it is about shedding light. So thank you for being that light for so many people. Oh, thank you so much. I, I'm glad. I'm, I'm just so happy that it makes people happy and it's resonating and it's... Because if you weren't doing this, there. you'd be back in TV? I don't know. Maybe. I always say if I had like 50 lives to leave, I would do... 50 different things. I told Jeremiah earlier, I would, in another life, I'll be a detective. Ooh. Mm -hmm. mm. I like being, I like just figuring stuff yeah. out. Like, ooh, Probably I saw that. Stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've thought about architect, lawyer. Like, there's so many things that interest me. Um, I know, I, I think about that sometimes. I was like, man, if I had enough time, yeah. we'd do more stuff. I know. That's what I'm like, if you do go on like TV or acting or something like that, you have a chance to, just for a moment. Do, exactly, <laughs> like, exactly. I am this person. I'm or, not a detective, but I play one on TV, you know. <laughs> 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 uh, <sighs> but yeah, I uh, I don't know. Maybe I'd still be in television. I, I, like I said, I loved my job, um, but I love this more. Mm. So. Follow your love. If there's yes. anything that you got from today, follow your love. You can't go wrong with that because love begets love Absolutely. and more love. And then we just... All feel loved, right? I mean, what more do we need, right? <laughs> we could definitely use a little more of that in the world, I think. Yeah. So. And luckily for you, it's one cookie at a time, right? That's right. Changing the world one cookie at a time. So if someone <laughs> wants to delve in and find out more about Milk Jar Cookies, where can we follow you? You can follow us on the social medias uh, at Milk Jar Cookies. Uh, our TikTok, which the girls at the shop are running, and it's so good. I got um, a follow. Yes, they're doing such a great job. Um, that is Milk Jar Cookies official. Mm -hmm. um, somebody took Milk Jar Cookies. Yeah, I don't know. Down. Um, but otherwise, uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook are all Milk Jar Cookies. And then our website is milkjarcookies.com. And if somebody is checking for you, Courtney, because they say, I want to be like Courtney when I grow up, how can they follow you? Um, I am on Instagram at Courtney K. Cowan. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pictures of my dog on there. <laughs> so if you like dogs, you'll be very happy to follow me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And is there anything else that you want us to know about or that you want to give a shout out or shed light on? Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. This was, you know, I hope my message helps one person out there trying to follow their dream at least. Hey. And I just, I feel inspired um, from talking to you and being in your midst. So thank you for doing what you do. Oh, wow. And for following your dream. Thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. We ought to give each other thanks a little bit more, huh? Absolutely. Makes people feel good. Yes. Like, And you should, you should celebrate yourself too. I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. So. Because mm -hmm. we didn't have to get up today, right? Nope. Could not have woke up, you know? That's right. We made a choice. That's right. And I hope you make the choice to show up as your best self. Always. 
And I tell Jeremiah and I tell people all the time, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. So when do you make the decision to be great? When do you make the decision to choose you? Um, when do you make the decision to live full out? Because um, if you're not out, you're in. And nothing grows in, right? And so Everything. many <laughs> wisdom pearls there. So good. So um, I appreciate you uh, for joining me on the podcast. I appreciate you for listening out there and deciding to take a chance on a dream and understanding that um, oftentimes follow your gut. It's already inside. And guess what? You have everything you need to achieve it. And if you don't have it, use the resources to go get it. I mean, just think about what a little butter, a little sugar, a little baking soda can do. I mean, Courtney uses it to share a smile. What about you? What are you waiting on? I think it's time to go after your dreams. Not only because uh, progress is to be made, it's because you're worth it. You're worth taking a chance on. You're worth somebody to believe in. Yeah, you. I, I, I'm not making this up. I'm just saying what it is. Because if I had myself had not going after my dreams, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. You wouldn't hear what Courtney has to say. So I just want to encourage you to keep dreaming and keep living. And if you felt inspired and you're like, hey, I know somebody that would be great on the show because they can share their story. I want to encourage you to email me. Vitamin D at dawndayspeaks.com. Email us, myself, Jeremiah, or Elle. We'll get to your email. We'll perhaps talk about you being on the show. And you know, we also do advice letters, right? So if you need advice on your relationships, um, your career, anything, email us. I always tell people all the time, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Because if you wanna be better, you wanna do better, you have to be able to see better. So I'm not sugarcoated, even though I like to keep it sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep it as authentic as possible so that you can see what it is. But more importantly, that you can see what it isn't. And um, also, I don't know if you checked out yet. You know our interviews are on YouTube. So check it out. Dawn Day Speaks. You can catch out some of the awesome clips, some of the quick doses, some of the advice letters. Check it out. And of course, as always, if you enjoyed this conversation, can you tell somebody to tell somebody? to tell somebody else that Vitamin D with Dawn Day podcast is available wherever you get your favorite podcast. Okay? I told you we're out here making sure that um we live full out. So sh share the joy, share the light. Um, if you also would like some Vitamin D in the meantime, in between time, I want to encourage you to follow me at Dawn Day Speaks on all social media, okay? All right. You know I say I'm in the business of making dreams come true. And I damn sure ain't gonna forget about mine. So until next time, I want you to always remember that you are your greatest asset. Coming up next on the Vitamin D with Dawn Day podcast, I sit down with my good friend, Tori Foodie. Tune in to hear about her background in food science, how your favorite foods get made, and some interesting results from our in-person taste test. Get your vitamin D right here with me and get excited about your life.